Hi guys, welcome back to Red Dog Gaming, where today we are bringing you another online Napoleon Total War battle. This one gets off to a storming start. It is a blitz at the pyramids between this unholy alliance of the Ottomans and the French fighting together for once, not fighting against each other as in the Napoleonic Wars. Um, it gets off to a roaring start, so we're going to pause the game just there. Fighting against the Prussians and the Spanish. Not sure why they're at the pyramids. Not sure why they're fighting together. But they're fighting together against this unholy alliance. Now I was fighting as France. And uh, Karl von Clausewitz was fighting as the Ottomans. And as you've seen from my other video. He is a very good player. And you're going to see that once again today. And as you can see he has brought no artillery. So that Ottoman army is 10 of these Nizam the first Kadir infantry. And ten mounted, uh, sorry, nine Nizam Kadits, and just a standard general's bodyguard. My army over here is two six-inch howitzers, plus four chasseurs, plus four of these glorious, glorious Swiss foot, and one fusiliers of the line, plus an old guard, the greatest unit in the whole game, and the beautiful young guard, and four chasseurs. A cheval. Well, three plus some guard chasseur a cheval in these fancy red coats. And I brought Marshal Salt to manage the army, to lead them all. There he is. Nice mustache. Fantastic. Uh, across from us, we have this Spanish player who brought four of the standard fusiliers, three of the Spanish light infantry, and two of these balloon guards, as well as. Two 12 pounder foot artillery, some of these um, cuirassiers, usually led by as well Cuesta, I believe, and then some of these irregular troops that were already positioned up here when the game started. So he had a volunteers of Coruna, Coruna, Cazadores of Coruna, so a light infantry and an infantry unit of Coruna, which is a beautiful unit. Look at that, fantastic, as well as some of these volunteers of Madrid. So some standard uh, hus Hussars, I believe those guys are. And these guys are Hussars as well. Hussars de Valpenas. And Lanceros de Castilla. So Castilian Lancers as well. So he brought these irregular troops. But generally when you bring them, you bring them to, you know, kind of, you know, ambush someone or, you know, hide in some woods somewhere and come out at the end of the battle when you need some troops. Not to just, I guess, to take the hill. They wanted to take the hill, but we decided we weren't going for the hill. And a lot of people on pyramids kind of, um, you know, always go for this hill. But the hill is not necessarily something that you want to go for all the time. But look at this. This is Klaus, um, Karl von Klauswitz. He was going for an absolute bum rush on these Spanish guys. And you can see he heavily outweighs them. These infantry are maybe not as good as the Spanish infantry. But he heavily outweighs them in infantry and cavalry. Um, and unfortunately, the uh, Spanish player wasn't quite happy with that. Calling him <laughs> calling him names, calling him a spammer, calling him an arsehole. All that sort of stuff. Uh, but it wasn't in the rules. So the rules for this was max five lights, max two artillery and no fixed artillery. Um, and that was the rules. So we went with that. We got our six pounder howitzers in, in formation and I saw him rushing up and he was like, come on, support me. So I had to rush up as well and I was like, damn, I'm, I'm, I'm behind, I'm lagging, bro. Look at this cavalry charge over on the left flank. First things first though, let us take a look over here. We got our chasseurs à cheval just to stand opposite these guys and fire some volleys into them. We fought them hard. But this is going to be interesting for me because I was so focused on that right flank that I didn't get a chance to see the great cavalry charge of the Ottomans. Look at these guys. Absolute beauties. Ready to go. Ready to charge that Spanish flank. He brought his infantry up to support as well. So he turned this flank completely. And I was bringing down some of my troops to support. Moving slowly right now. But they're going to be moving faster soon. My artillery was in position. They'll get ready to fire soon. But look at this. They decided to charge in on this flank. There's a lot going on in this battle. That is why it is on slow-mo right now. Got a good charge off with the Lancers. Because I was too busy focusing on microing these guys. But ultimately we were going to be able to win there. And have cavalry supremacy. 
Now this Prussian player, great guy called Hale. Really, really good guy. Really nice. Not, unfortunately, like the Spanish player calling anyone names or anything. Um, but those Dragoons could have really done some damage over here. But we had already cleaned up that, that uh, Spanish cavalry already, apart from this one unit of volunteers of Madrid. Are they, they might be pistol cavalry as well. Are they pistol cavalry? I don't know, because I don't really use uh, Spain. As you can see over here, the great Ottoman charge in all its glory coming down upon the Spanish player. And look at that. Firing their pistol shots. He gets into square formation. But with this many cavalry firing, he's not even going to take that many losses. And he's going to fire into them and kind of smash them to pieces while we're maneuvering slowly up here. But I decide to bring some of my infantry down, try and challenge these cannons, get my cannons in the action as well. Look at that, that square formation. As you can see, he's using his cavalry to great effect, firing upon the enemy and running away. Extreme amount of micro, guys. Do not underestimate the amount of micro that you need to be able to do this. But look at these guys. They're shredding that, that square. And he's got squares himself. He's got infantry, and they're getting shredded by cavalry guns. But it's just the sheer number. The sheer number of them all at once. And as you can see, the Spanish lines are starting to fall apart. The Spanish player tries to bring up his light infantry to co combat this. As you can see, these Ottoman troops are gassing. They are sprinting for battle. Sprinting to fight the Spanish. He brings his cuirassiers across, which is a good tactic. This was a good move by the Spanish player. But the sheer numbers of these Ottoman troops are just going to be able to overwhelm them eventually. And I was here ready to put in some pain on these light infantry and support him any way that I could. And I was forcing my whole line around this side and just forgetting about the hill while they were pretty much focusing on getting up the hill there. And this hill, as Hale pointed out afterwards, the Prussian player, is really, really gnarly to move around in. Like, all these boxes and stuff are a mess of mess to move around in. As you can see, that Carrossier was kind of good there. It, it, it routed one of them, but you can see this mass of horses surrounding the Spanish, swarming them here. And putting the pain down on them with their pistols. His cavalry is going to break there. And even these squares can do nothing to prevent the inevitable. Quite a thick formation he's got going here. But he doesn't need to have thin lines. Because this cavalry is just shredding everything that moves in front of it. Look at these guys. Shredding them. Let's take a look at some of this line action. These guys out in front. Firing into the light infantry. Straight ahead of them. And here the charge comes. Great charge of the Nizam Kedit. Look at these thick Ottoman ranks. Thick, bro. Thick. You can see I was bringing some of my troops forward. And I basically realized my light infantry was not needed across here. So we sent them up right. I also kind of forgot about Marshal Salt. He's, uh, he's chilling on top of the hill like... Well, he's not. He's chilling looking out of the desert like... Damn. How far does it go? How far does that desert go? But no, he does come into the play into play later on. Set my Swiss foot round this way as well. Where is he going? I oh, was to support these guys. So we brought these guys forward. I decided to charge directly into this artillery rather than waiting to fire at them because they need to be silenced. But unfortunately, as you can see, look at those two shots. Those two shots decimated half of my unit there. Look at that. From 160 to 76. And unfortunately, those guys were out. But we managed to get the Swiss foot ready to go and in there as soon as we can. Look at this. Here come the cavalry. This Spanish army is just fully, fully boxed in right now. Bit of firing into the back here, but I'll, I'll forgive him a micro mistake. He's basically destroyed this whole Spanish army just by himself. Just with mounted cavalry, really. Hardly any infantry needed. And as you can see... The Spanish army is basically mopped up. So while he's doing that, I decided to put a bit of pressure on these guys up on the hill. Bring my chasseurs into play and pound them with some artillery shots. Some great artillery fire going in, pounding them there. This is the last stand of that poor Spanish army. Absolutely shredded to pieces, unfortunately, for them. But damn, I don't know what you would do against this. This is a very underrated technique. Like, What do you do against these... Uh, these guys, like, 
There's pretty much nothing you can do without countering with cavalry. Yeah, the Spanish army runs. Run for the hills, my friend. Run for... I'd, if I was you, I'd run a bit quicker than that. Because <laughs> these Ottomans are angry. They're happy with their unholy alliance, but they're angry nonetheless. Angry at you being in the, their lands for some reason. Why are you there, Spain? Why? But look, he has finished them off fully. Fantastic move by him. Completely shredding that player. That just gave me time to kind of put the pressure on the Spanish and wait for him to support me. So now it's basically two armies versus one. And this army is not really that damaged. See, some of these units carrying damage, but a lot of them doing very, very healthy, healthy amount as well. And this cavalry is nothing to sniff at. He manages to catch out Mr. Quaster over here. Fires point blank. Go on, point blank. I said point blank. He, they're just like, oh, bro, chilling. Just chilling, bro. Oh, they don't even fire. And now he charges. Why would you charge? Run them away. But yeah, as you can see, this Ottoman army coming into play. These guys seem to be quicker as well. I'm pretty sure I moved my Swiss foot before these guys. But these guys are tired. My guys are very tired. It might be because they're in desert. They do like fighting on desert. So, as he manages to get his forces into the battle here, we start to push. Just waiting. There's no point over pushing before he's ready to go. Uh, we might as well use the resources, use our superior numbers to surround and smash these guys. And of course, we've got the artillery firing these heavy shots down on that hill. So they've kind of come back. He's got his 12 pounder foot artillery here, which is a pretty nice formation, especially facing down that way. But as you can see, where my troops are, they can see these guys and fire on them. Was, oh, one of those artillery shots, I believe, killed some of my troops there. You can't see any of my troops here. You can only see down here. And that's the problem with this map. There's loads of these little gnarly bits where if you put, say, your cannons here, you can't see anyone coming over the hill, all that sort of stuff. Kind of forgot about this Swiss fort. Everything was moving so quickly. So ridiculously quickly. But we decided to bring up the chasseur. Bring them up to try and put, look how close they're going to get. Put down the pain on some of these musketeers. As you can see, this Prussian army is pretty much untouched. It's very, very nicely intact. Still got a decent amount of cavalry over here as well. But the glorious mounted Nizam Kedit cavalry, they have done all the damage today. They have done all the harm. They have been perfect. Look at this unit. That's a that is a that is a damaged unit to be fair. But as you can see, look what he's doing. He's using it. He's using it perfectly as a bait unit before he gets his units up ready to shoot. And that's worked for me as well. But look, as you can see, my chasseurs are exhausted. Like, no, no, please, no more. No more. No more fighting. We bring them forward, ready to fire. Have to halt these guys because these musketeers are genuinely so close. Like, look how close we're getting. It's crazy. Um, but at this point, I realize this Swiss foot's not going to be needed. We've got enough troops on this side. We'll send them round to the far side. I could have swapped them in there because these guys are technically... Not really in the greatest of line battles. Um, which is probably a mistake on my part. I should have swapped these guys in and sent these two guys out. Uh, just shifted them across rather than sending these guys the whole way around. But they're going to prove crucial later on. They're going to do a good role here. These guys didn't want to fire. That was one of their problems. They really didn't want to fire. And I noticed that my range of my artillery was not quite good enough. So I'm going to have to bring them forward. And like we talked about in the last battle, don't be afraid of moving your artillery mid-battle if it's not working for you. And it wasn't working, so we move them forward. Great French cavalry charge up the hill. He's also charging some of his cavalry into the cannon. They don't protect it, so we managed to get a good charge off there. We managed to get a bit of a charge off on those tiradores. But we retreat out, because there's no point charging into all this, uh, all this infantry. Plus, there's stakes everywhere, look. Stakes everywhere. Still has these guys up here as well, which is fantastic. But we're bringing our young guard and our Swiss foot around to put the pain down. And you can see this is the old guard here. Glorious troops firing away. Well done, boys. So we've routed this musketeer. And at this point, it's kind of a mess in here. But we want to clean it up. He's got his Nizams in there. I've got my old guard. 
we're going to do some serious damage. But these guys are really slow getting in position because they are exhausted by now. Absolutely exhausted. But as you can see, we've got them fully boxed up. And we're pushing, we're probing in the places where it's best to probe. You know, we're pushing up here. Well, we're not pushing around there, but it forces them. With these guys down here, it forces them to stay on this side and keep as many troops as they can on this side. So now we've got our howitzers basically nearly in position. So I bring my cavalry up here and I think we can probably get a sneaky charge off on these boys if we want to. So we're going to try and do that. As you can see, he charges his musketeers in. You don't want to charge an angry angry Ottoman, I promise you that. Do not charge an angry Ottoman. He is going to be fuming. Here come the chasseurs. Got a nice, thick formation of chasseurs here. Firing up on the enemy. Plus the old guard. We get the old guard in a bit of a better position here. Ready to go. Ready to put down the pain. These chasseurs. Problem is over here, just so bitty, this, this area of the map. Oh, and as you can see, I realised that my other, <laughs> my other, my other uh, howitzer might be a bit too far away. Oh no, these guys were just targeting the wrong people, so I started to target this cannon at the back. Look at this mass cavalry movement across this side. Sensing weakness in my cavalry, which it is, it's weaker than theirs, if it can get into, the, if it gets into the fight. Um, and this side's stronger in cavalry. He wants to try and put the pain down on me, I think. You can see these these uh, howitzer shots. It's a concentrated area full of troops doing some serious damage over here. He's bringing his musketeers around this flank. And this flank was kind of vulnerable, so I needed to do something about this. But as you can see, this middle part was just like an, like an open wound. Bleeding, routing troops. These guys... Are not going to be able, these Jaegers are not going to be able to hold back the old guard and a load of chasseurs. Basically, at this point, we are through the middle and he is focusing all the troops on the side. And we, you know, there is a possibility here that if this was a foot, they might have got routed. But because it's a young guard, I thought it's going to have a decent, decent chance and it's going to stand up to the fire. It doesn't need to, it can take a lot of damage. He manages to form square, so we charge out. And he has. His dragoons ready to pounce upon mine. And as you can see, this Nizam Kedit as a sacrificial unit getting into those Jaegers. And he's pushing up on all sides now. So we are pushing them in every single direction. But yeah, those dragoons. Dragoons thought better of it, but we forced this musketeer into square for a little bit, which is great. Pushing up through the middle here. Needed these guys to push, but there's really only space for one. So we're going to see one of these Swiss foot switch switch around to the other side. I wanted to bring the old guard in to put the pain down as well because I knew they could do a lot of damage, especially on these Jaegers. The Jaegers are trash. At this point, I was focusing down his general so that we could, you know, route them a bit early. Bit of a dirty tactic, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. Napoleon didn't do it, and what happened at Waterloo? No, not Napoleon. Wellington did, didn't do it. Well, they still won Waterloo. They could have killed Napoleon probably with a few well-shot cannon shots early in the battle. Here we are, musketeers. So we managed to get a good charge off on the musketeers there. I was hoping that they would break instantly, but they don't quite break instantly. Instantly, so That gives time for these dragoons to kind of charge us. So I try and turn the forces and charge them back. As you can see, we're kind of stuck here. But at this point, I really don't need my cavalry. I need these guys to get in and fire at them. And I need this Swiss foot to get there as fast as possible. They're fresh now. They've been rested for so long. These chasseurs are kind of useless at this point. As you can see, the old guard are here. Putting down the pain on these boys in the flank. Fantastic. This old guard has hardly taken any damage. If you're fighting against France, guys, you want to get as much non-direct damage into those old guard as early and as quickly as possible. So that means artillery shots, that means cavalry charges when they're not in square, all that stuff. As you can see, Gregorio Garcia de la Cuesta has charged the Nizam Kedit for probably his last time. I believe that's him dying there. And this Lifosar is charging the Nizam Kedit. He brings his cavalry through as well, deciding to charge into the enemy. So who was that? Oh, that was the, uh, yeah, Chasseurs. And my chasseurs were done at this point. And he still does have a decent amount of cavalry up here. But 
I knew we were good. So there we are. General Cuesta has died. At this point, I uh, I told my artillery to stop because <laughs> we're doing more harm than good at this point. Look at this. There's his artillery. Marshal Sul has finally backed from his uh, gaze into the abyss. Nice. Yes, fantastic. But that's it. He has killed... Uh, no, not my artillery. Who's he killed? Who's my entire unit dead? Probably those chasseurs, I believe. As you can see, we have just rushed through here and destroyed them as much as possible. And at that point, they all routed. So that was the victory. As you can see, look at Karl von Clausewitz. He was doing some serious damage. Took a lot of damage himself. But look at that army. 2,300. He killed 1,800, I killed 1,100. So this Spanish player actually killed more than me, but the working together didn't quite happen, and the Spanish player was obviously not up for teamwork or uh, the company of other people, really. So, yeah, but Klaus von Klauschwitz, all to him. But we did well holding that hill and holding them from getting to the Spanish player. But yeah, fantastic battle, blitz battle on the pyramids. What do you guys think? Hope you enjoyed it. It was a fantastic, good, fun battle. If we can get to 20 likes for this video, that would be amazing. So thank you very much, guys, for watching. And I'll see you again on the next video.